That's not good. What's up guys, Brad here from Piney Grove and today is maintenance day. Let's get started. As you can see here on my hour meter, this is the dreaded 400 hour maintenance interval for the Kubota hydrostatic tractor. And by dreaded maintenance interval, I mean the most expensive one. We have to completely drain all the hydraulic oil that's in this tractor. That's about six gallons. Plus we have to do an oil change and a fuel filter change. None of this is overly complex, but it does take a little time. And the first thing I gotta do is take off the loader because that'll give me easier access to the filters and the drain plugs. If I've done everything right, I just back up and the loader stays here. So on the right side of an L3901, you have your fuel filter right here. The oil filler is right there and it's easier if this guard is out of the way to fill it with oil. But first, let's start draining the hydraulic fluid. There's the main drain plug for the hydraulic fluid right there. Back there behind that little lever, right there at the end of my wrench is the second plug. And there's also two more plugs on the bottom of the rear differential. I'm using a 7 8 inch wrench. And this bucket may not be enough to hold it all. So you gotta be prepared to put this plug back in. You gotta make sure that crush washer goes back in. But there it goes. I'm gonna pull the uh, oil check, dipstick check, so that it'll flow better. Level's right about here on the bucket. I'm gonna go ahead and put this plug back in. But that's the lifeblood of a Kubota hydrostatic tractor right there. But I'm putting Super UDT2 in here, and that is the latest technology oil from Kubota. Besides this video, I'll be taking pictures of everything I'm doing here, just to support that I'm doing the maintenance at the proper interval. Bottom of the bucket's pretty clean. I don't see any wear metals in there at all. That was two and a half gallons we took out the first time. I think it's 6.1 gallons, and always refer to your user's manual. I'll look it up and put it on the screen here. But don't rely on somebody from YouTube to make sure they get their numbers right. After taking out that first batch, a bucket should hold as much as it could possibly have left in it. You can see it's slowing down to a trickle now, and that bucket's only up to about where that blue is. Now I'll drain from here. This is the lowest point, so if there's any wear metals, you'll probably see them here. And again, I'm using a 7 8 wrench on here, which works fine. I'm going to go ahead and hold the pan up closer, because I don't know how much it's going to come towards me. And I don't want a face full of this stuff. That looks real clean coming out of there. I can see the gear in there that drives this front drive shaft. So there's not much at all there. Now we're gonna let this drain for a bit and then switch to the rear differential. My camera tripod won't go low enough to show this being taken out, but there is one of the rear differential drain plugs right there. If you come over here to the other side, there's the other one right there. I'm using a 14 millimeter wrench on these back plugs. Hopefully you can see that oil coming down and it's going to be a quarter or so because this is lower than that last plug that we did. Should be able to see that draining real good there. A lot of people forget these two back here. The lighting's not that great from this angle, but here's your rear differential and you have this casing here on both sides of your rear differential and there's a plug at the very bottom and that's where I'm draining from. That one's done draining. My drain pan's full. I'm going to empty my drain pan and then do the right side, and then all the old hydraulic fluid will be out of this tractor. Now I gotta work on the filters, but I have filter guards from Zooks Welding on my tractor, so I don't wanna take them off. I'm gonna try and remove the filter with the guards on, so this is gonna be a little bit more complicated than on a stock tractor. Here's my Zooks Welding guard right here. I think I can get that off with a filter wrench from out here. It's gonna put a little bit of oil in here, but I can wipe that up. I've got something called Super Clean. It's really good at wiping up residual oil. One thing I wanted to say is I ran the tractor for a little bit to take off the loader, and the hydraulic oil was cool to the touch when I drained it. I couldn't get my filter wrench in there. It's just too tight to get that in there. It's out of the way. Time to take this filter off. Clean hands. I'll just check in here. There's, there's no wear metals or anything. A lot of times on the suction side of the filter, you'll have wear metals in here and there's just nothing there. And catch a little bit of this hydraulic fluid. It's real clean, so I'm not gonna bother opening up a container just to get some on this seal. Take a clean finger and just rub on that seal so that it glides along this surface here as it tightens. Put the new filter on. I took an extra minute to make sure I got it on and you can see it spins on nicely now. So it just made contact with the seal. I can see the writing there so I want to go about a half a turn more. And that's it. You don't have to put a wrench on it. Okay, the guards are back on, the oil filter's tight, and it's got the hours and the date that we changed it ready to go to the other side. 
Now we're on the left side of the tractor, and this is called the HST, or the hydrostatic filter. The other one's called a hydraulic filter. I call it the suction side filter. I don't know if I can get that filter loose with that guard in place, so we might be taking this guard off as well. I actually think I can get this one. Yeah, I can get this one loose. So it made a little bit of a mess, but there's probably 15, 20 minutes to take that guard off and put it back on. Got the hours and the date on it. Put some clean oil on that filter gasket and then spin it on. And just like the other side, I spin it until the gasket makes contact and then I'll go half a turn more and then this filter will be done. Okay, at this point, all the hydraulic oil is out of the tractor. Both the HST and the hydraulic filter have been changed under your left and right foot and we're ready to refill it with about six gallons of Super UDT2 hydraulic fluid from Kubota. Now I use a pair of water pump pliers on this cap right here. I often can't get this oil filler cap off. That just makes it easier to start it. Okay, so now the fun part. I got one of these long skinny funnels. I find that's the best one to fill back here. I've seen people remove this bar here that's behind the seat that holds the original uh, factory toolbox, but I've taken my long skinny funnel, put it in the fill hole, and then taken a bungee and held down on the funnel. And that way I have clearance here to pour the oil in. I'm using a five gallon pail of oil, and that's harder than using the one gallon, but it's cheaper if you buy it in five gallon. I don't know how much cheaper five gallons are. I'll share the numbers with you in a minute. It's working pretty good. So I know the total amount is 6.1 gallons. This is five gallons, so we'll check the level. We'll see what five gallons does. It's just barely registering there. And you can see the dipstick has these marks right here. So I need it in the middle of these marks. We're gonna go with another gallon. Got just under six gallons in there. I've got the dipstick dry. I want it just over the top level indicator because the filters aren't full. But there's the top level indicator and there's a little bit of oil just past it. So I'm gonna leave that good until I start the tractor and then recheck it. Before I get started on the fuel filter and changing the oil, I'll share some numbers with you. And this is straight from my Kubota dealer. So the oil filter cartridge was $13. Oil filter cartridge 54, that's one of the hydraulic ones. Cartridge oil filter 3164. $90 for the two hydraulic filters and $13 for the oil filter. The air filter was $18, we'll, we'll change that out today. One gallon of engine oil was $50. Five gallons of the hydraulic oil, Super UDT2 or squared. That five gallons of that was $114. And then I bought another gallon of that at $24. So you save $6 by buying it in the five gallon bucket. So this service is costing me about $310 with tax to do it by myself. I don't know how many hours Kubota would charge. Let's call it two hours at $150 an hour. So I'm saving at least $300 by doing it myself. I also don't have to take the time to take the tractor to the dealer. And right now they're backed up with maintenance. They might not get to it for a month. So I don't have to carry my tractor there. I get my tractor right away. So those are the figures for this 400 hour maintenance interval for the Kubota L-Series tractor. So I got to take out this one bolt here with a 14 millimeter socket. That'll take this guard off. Give me easy access to the filters. It just snaps in place. Now I can get to the filters. I'm always hesitant on a diesel to replace fuel filters because I know that they'll vapor lock or they will lose their prime. I don't know what's gonna happen to tell you the truth. I think if I take this off, fuel's just gonna keep coming in. There's gotta be a fuel shut off. Everything's in place and ready to take off this fuel filter. I put some rags and some cardboard here because if you get fuel on anything here, it's hard to clean off and then it attracts dust, and then it always looks like you have a fuel leak in the future. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I'm gonna take a clean rag and just clean this mating surface here where the new seal will ride against and make sure there's no parts of the old seal there. Got the new filter here. Just take some of that clean diesel fuel, put on the gasket, try to get it in here and not cross thread it. With these lines right here, it's real easy to cross thread this filter. So I wanna make sure it's started perfectly straight. You never wanna force these things because the threads on them are not very strong and they'll get cross threaded and you'll have to put on your old filter if you wanna keep using your equipment. All right, so the gasket is contacted. I'm gonna go about a half or three quarters of a turn after that 
and then the fuel filter will be changed. We have to bleed this because this filter has no fuel in it and we could have filled it before we put it in there to help this process a little bit. But you have a bleeder port right here on the top and it's a 10 millimeter wrench. You just unscrew that a couple turns and then turn on the key and the fuel pump will push fuel into the filter and the air will come out that bleed port. If you've noticed on these L-series, when you turn the key, you can actually hear the pump going, the fuel pump going. We'll let it run for about a minute. I think I hear air coming out of the bleed port. And if it starts running ragged when we start it up, after we change the oil, we can always loosen that up and, and let it purge again. Tighten the bleed port and then we'll change the oil. To drain the oil, we'll use a 19 millimeter and there's two plugs. There's one on this side and one on the other side. So we'll drain this side first and we already have the oil dipstick out to let air in the system. Now this has a crush washer, so you gotta make sure you don't lose that. It's reusable. I try to change engine oil on diesels every year or every 100 hours. This is a little bit over because I knew we were coming up on the 400 hour to change the hydraulic oil. So I just went ahead and combined the two surfaces together. Now we'll drain the left side. There'll be a lot less oil come out of this side because most of it came on the other side. We're in the final stretches here. So we'll take out the oil filter and I already wiped around it so that when I pull this filter off, there's not a bunch of debris that might possibly go in the oil passages. Get off as fast as we can so it doesn't leak. It's still gonna leak. Make sure there's no old filter residue here, no dirt. Got the new filter here. Take some clean oil, put on the new filter gasket. Spin that on there. Just like the other filters, as soon as the gasket contacts, then we'll go ahead and turn it another half a turn to three quarters of a turn. We want it tight, but not over tight. So you saw I installed that filter without putting oil in it first. And in a previous video, I filled it with oil, but then someone left me a comment and said, it matters not whether you fill it with oil, it isn't gonna affect your engine. I always thought that instant that the engine starts, it would have oil because I had pre-filled the filter and it's probably still a best practice but there are no studies out there that say that filling the filter with oil or putting it on empty like I just did will affect the life of your engine. Leave a comment down below. What do you think about that? We've got the oil filter on and I recommend as a best practice that you write the date and the hours that you change your oil filter. This L3901 takes 7.1 quarts of oil. So we're gonna put in four quarts. Kubota 15W engine oil. It's what's recommended for all their L series tractors. We'll probably put about six quarts in. We'll check the dipstick. And if it's showing at least halfway on the dipstick, we'll start the tractor let it run for a little bit and then let everything settle down and then check the hydraulic oil and the engine oil. We're gonna do the air filter too. If you got any suggestions or any better ways of doing this, leave a comment down below. You never know when someone might have a great tip. I've got a tip for you. Bring as many rags as you think you'll need and then double that amount. All right, we're about three quarters of the way up that dipstick. It's good enough to start the tractor. Well, before we start it up, we'll go ahead and change the air filter. This air filter is probably not too bad. Well, I guess it's a little dirty. I do keep it blown out with compressed air. And it's funny because I got this filter from the Kubota dealer, but it's actually a Kawasaki filter. It's the exact same filter, same diameter, everything. Now Kubota does have a two-stage filter where there's one that goes inside of here. Some people like to use that one, I don't. My dealer didn't recommend it. But that fits right in there, just like the Kubota one. Put that on there. This says top, has two little snaps. But the reason that says top is because this has got a drain right here in case water gets in there, which I think you've had a bad day if you get water up this high on your tractor. So now we can safely start it up. I put the cover on the back for the hydraulic so no dirt went in there if we stir up any dirt. And I put a rag over top of the funnel on the right side of the engine. Here goes nothing. Turn the key on. We might have to bleed the fuel again. I don't know. Yep, we need to bleed again. Let's try it again. That's not good. Third time, I'm getting nervous. Let's try it again. There we go. I'm gonna bleed it a little more. Once I got the fuel system bled, she ran just fine. I checked all the oil levels, the engine oil and the hydraulic and got them both right up to the bottom of the top mark on both dipsticks. So she's good to go. She's ready to have the loader put on it and get back to work. I'll put in the description down below the oil, the filters, the wrenches, just everything it takes to service an L-Series. So you'll have a one-stop shopping guide for when you wanna do your 400 hour service. Now there's other aspects of the 400 hour service like inspecting the fuel grommet, 
greasing and other things, so be sure to consult your owner's manual. Never rely on someone from YouTube to maintain your tractor. But that's gonna do it for today's video. Until the next one, y'all take care out there, and remember, life's short, tractor hard.